waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the coast. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rattler, no more war, no more children scampering for safety, no more evacuees. After 17 years, the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front signed the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro. The comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro is the crowning glory of our struggle. MILF Chief Murad Ibrahim says the Bangsamoro Peace Agreement is the quote, grandest articulation of our aspirations. And Egypt's Army Chief Abdel Fattah al-Sisi quits the military to run for president. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. It is a historic day, the end of 40 years of armed struggle in the southern Philippines. After 17 years of negotiations, the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front sign a peace deal on Thursday. President Aquino says we're trading in a history of sorrow for a future of peace. The milestone signing could be the Aquino presidency's biggest achievement yet. Angela Casaway reports. The comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro is the crowning glory of our struggle. Seventeen years of intense negotiations draw to a close as the government and the more Islamic Liberation Front sign a final peace agreement. The historic event raises hopes for lasting peace in Mindanao. Hundreds of MILF members, foreign dignitaries, and supporters of the peace process troop to Kalayan Hall to witness the momentous event. The rebels hailed the peace deal as the grandest articulation of their aspiration. Their chairman, al Haj Murad, says the MILF has no franchise on the new political entity. The role of the MILF may be likened to a gatekeeper for the duration of the transition period, where after such period, the keys to the gate will be willingly handed over to the democratic will of the Bangsamoro. To be overly empathic, it will not be a government of the MILF, but the government of the Bangsamoro. As the peace process in Mindanao enters the implementation phase, the most crucial part of the peace pact, the country that brokered the talks reiterates its support for the deal. Despite the current crisis in Malaysia, Prime Minister Najib Razak flies to Manila to witness the signing of the comprehensive agreement. I promise President Aquino that Malaysia would continue to assist with development. We are willing to help build institutions, strengthen education, improve agriculture. This promise stands for as long as it is needed. Malaysia remains a partner for peace and for development. With the peace pact signed, it is now up to Congress to pass a draft law that will provide a legal framework for the new political entity. The Aquino administration makes a commitment to rally the support of lawmakers behind the deal and issues a warning to those who plan to derail the peace process. My administration will go all out to forge a principled consensus for enduring security and prosperity. I expect the deliberations in Congress to be characterized by a sincere desire to improve on the Bangsamoro basic law and not by self-interest that only aims to perpetuate an untenable status quo. I will not let peace be snatched from my people again. Not now. Not now, when we have already undertaken the most difficult and most significant steps to achieve it. Under the peace deal, the envisioned Bangsamoro government has greater political and fiscal powers than the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. The real work to make lasting peace in Mindanao a reality now begins. As the peacemakers like to stress, the process would not come easy. It is now up to the stakeholders to make 17 years of negotiations and four decades of armed struggle not go to waste. Angela Kasawai, Rappler. At least 10 people are injured in a clash between leftists and Muslims in Mendiola 
Thursday. DZMM reports the Muslims are praying to mark the peace deal sign to mark the peace deal signing between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front when they're disrupted by protesters tagged by police as members of the left underground. Reports say the Muslims, angered by what they see as a show of disrespect, runs after the leftist group. Police send additional forces to the area to stop the clash. For our social media post of the day, this historic signing gets a mixed response. Some hopeful, others skeptical. Catherine Mejia says, hope this is not another band-aid solution to the long-standing conflict in Mindanao. Michael Puebla says, give the government a chance to do what they have to do. It's not at all political unless you think of it. The Department of Justice, or DOJ, approves the indictment of the top leaders of the Communist Party of the Philippines, or CPP, Benito and Wilma Chamzon. In a resolution released Thursday, the DOJ found probable cause to charge the Chamzons for violating the Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulation Act and the Illegal Possession of Explosives Law. Authorities found three guns and two grenades without proper permits from the Chamzons' convoy when they were arrested in Cebu on March 22. The couple remains in police custody. At large, for decades, Benito Chamson is the alleged chairman of the CPP New People's Army, or NPA. His wife is said to be the Secretary General. The 40-year-old rebel army of the CPP is Asia's longest-running insurgency. The government says the arrest of the Chamsons is a serious blow to the rebel movement. Egypt's army chief and defense minister Abdel Fattah al-Sisi quits the military to run for president. Sisi promises to rid the country of terrorism almost nine months after he toppled its elected leader, Mohamed Morsi. Sisi faces no serious competition in the election, which will most likely be held before June. He's expected to win comfortably, riding on a wave of popularity for his law and order message. But Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood movement warns there could be stability in Egypt. There could be no stability in Egypt under the shadow of Sisi's leadership. Sisi's candidacy is likely to be welcomed by the millions of Egyptians tired of more than three years of turmoil since the Arab Spring overthrow of strongman Hosni Mubarak. But Sisi's candidacy is likely to inflame Islamist protests and worry secular activists who fear the Egyptian military's return to power. U.S. President Barack Obama meets Pope Francis for the first time Thursday at the Vatican City. The meeting is expected to focus on fighting global inequality. CNN says the meeting between the two world leaders could help Obama smooth tensions with Catholics on controversial issues like abortion and a contraception mandate included in Obama's health reform law. Obama tells the Pope, quote, I'm a great admirer at the start of their meeting in the Vatican's Apostolic Palace. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five, a New York jury finds Osama bin Laden's son-in-law and former Al-Qaeda spokesman Suleiman Abu Ghaith guilty on three counts of conspiracy to kill Americans and supporting terrorists. Abu Ghaith is best known for appearing with bin Laden in a video in September 2001, a day after the 9-11 attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people. He was arrested in Turkey in 2013. He denies the charges against him. At number six, U.S. President Barack Obama says Russia stands alone on the Ukraine crisis as he pays his first visit to the European Union headquarters in Brussels. Obama's visit is viewed as one of the most important trips by a U.S. president in years because of the crisis in Crimea. The trip is seen as a way to cement Western opposition to Russia's takeover of the peninsula. Obama says Russia miscalculated in thinking it could drive a wedge between Washington and Brussels. And at number eight, Seoul has an international rep reputation for plastic surgery and ads featuring famous surgeons and giant before and after photos are everywhere on street billboards, subway trains, and bus stops. But citizens say the ads fuel an unhealthy obsession with body image. Under new regulations, Seoul plans to limit these ads. No more than 20% of advertising at any subway station can be connected with the plastic surgery industry. For the full top 10, visit raptor.com's The Wrap. 
Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and our viewers the most emotionally. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. If you take a look, today is a green day. Five of these stories are actually connected to the peace agreement. Uh, no, this is the analysis of Dean Tony Lavinia, you have Bank Samoro Agreement, a great day for the country where he outlines some of the challenges ahead in addition to, to the signing of the deal. 90% happy, interestingly 3% angry. The story that's gotten the most number of votes today in the last 24 hours is actually the live streaming and live blogging as it happens, the signing of the Bank Samoro deal. Interestingly enough there, you have 4% afraid 2% inspired, 2% sad, and a whopping 87% happy. That green, bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. That is Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, March 27, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.